This is Brenda Hipsher with x Right Photo. Today, we're going to talk about why we need color management in digital photography. There's been a lot of change in the photo business over the past few decades. One of the most important changes is our need to control color, contrast, and luminance, or density, in our digital color workflow. We call this system of co control color management. We call this system of control color management. Today, we're going to demystify color management, explain why it's necessary, and talk about what you can do to keep your color workflow predictable and accurate. Our first question, is color management important? But what the heck is it again? Well, color management is the name given to processes and technologies whose purpose is to maintain the consistent color appearance of objects and images as they're reproduced using a variety of different devices, such as scanners, cameras, monitors, and printers. Do you think that would be important? Predictable, consistent color? It sure is. All of these devices produce a slightly different set of colors. The range of colors that a device produces is called a color gamut, and generally the larger one each device has, the better. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Because all of our devices produce different color gamuts, color management is very important if we want predictable, consistent results. But is it difficult to understand? No, not at all. Color management has evolved now so that beginners can have a solid color workflow and stop wasting time and money, throwing prints away, making the image look bad on the screen so it prints right, having work rejected for poor color, or worse yet, not getting jobs because your color is just not up to par. Huh, now that sounds expensive. Is it? No. From easy-to-use professional solutions to the ultimate in software and hardware technology, everything is available to you. Color management solutions are just about the only thing in your professional workflow that will pay for itself in short order, in wasted time and wasted materials alone. But what does it really do? Well, first of all, it gives us predictable and consistent results. When you work on a file and send it to your lab, you'll know what to expect when you hold the print in your hands. Remember we said each device in the workflow needs a profile. These profiles are standards that are created by the International Color Consortium. That's the only way we can be sure that what we see on our monitor is the same thing that our labs is seeing on their monitor. These are hardware and software solutions that work together to create a profile for each device. Now let's briefly look at some profiles overlaid on each other. The green right here represents Adobe RGB or what we used to call Adobe 1998. This might be what your processed file looks like. The, or the file that comes out of your camera. The blue line represents a monitor profile. Notice that the profiles reduce in size as we move from capture to view to print. The red line shows a printer profile. Now you can see the capture in green, the monitor in blue, and the printer in red. If all devices could produce the same colors, we would just have to calibrate each device so they would reproduce color in the same way. But what do we do with colors that are out of gamut or out of range, like these colors down here, that the device we're using, like the printer up here, can't reproduce? Well, color management to the rescue. Remember, Color management is the name given to processes and technologies whose purpose is to maintain the consistent color appearance of objects and images as they're reproduced using a variety of different devices like scanners, projectors, cameras, monitors, 
and printers. Now, here's the great myth that I hear from a lot of people. The great assumption that a lot of us make. If I purchase a good monitor, it will be accurate when I take it out of the box. Well, since your monitor is the viewfinder that you use to make color corrections, it's vital that it be standardized. Color management ensures that your monitor is producing the colors as accurately as possible. If your monitor is not accurate, everything you do in editing your photos is just guessing and hoping for the best. <laughs> now, positive thinking is good for our emotional well-being, but maybe not so much for editing photos. Most computer monitors are not set for photography right out of the box. They're not set for photo editing. They're set up for viewing web content, movies, videos, etc. Monitors often come out of the box very bright, high contrast, and cool or blue. Then, often we have multiple monitors that need to be matched, sometimes monitors with different backlight technologies. Your monitor certainly needs to match the monitor at your lab so that you're both seeing the same thing, and monitors certainly drift over time and need to be recalibrated and profiled. So even when we purchase very high-end monitors that are designed for photo editing, and even if right out of the box, they may be pretty close. They are going to drift over time and we need to make sure that our color is predictable, consistent, accurate every single day we're editing. Now, this is the most common response I get from folks when I start talking about calibration and profiling. I'll just set it so it looks good to my eye. And I'm sure none of you have ever said this before. You see, color is a function not only of our eyes, but also of our brain and body. For instance, is magenta red or red magenta? Well, it depends on who's talking. Have you heard the expression seeing red to describe someone who's angry? How about green with envy? Well, there's a reason why we use those terms. Our color vision changes depending on our emotions, how tired we are, whether we're hungry. Virtually everything about our physicality affects our color vision. When I ran a large custom color lab, we always had the color printers do color critical tests in the morning so that they were rested, well fed, and nobody had made them angry yet. Now let's talk about eyes. Count the white dots for me. Oh no. Okay, just count the black dots for me. <laughs> you see, eyes are very adaptable organs. They're wonderfully adaptable. They can adapt to just about anything they see. They can see color and, and contrast and luminance ranges that we can only dream about reproducing. So they adapt to whatever lighting and whatever conditions are available. Now, <laughs> this photo is a great illustration because this is what can happen with just black and white. Now, here's another illustration. We'll start talking about color. I just want you to look at the X in the middle of the page for a moment. You don't need to look at the bright colors. Just look at the X. Stare right at it. Continue to look at the X. I'm going to change the slide in just a few seconds. And I want you just to keep looking at the X no matter what happens. You ready? Just keep looking at that X. Here we go. Ha! What do you see when the color patches are removed? I'm guessing if you stared at that X for very long, you see color patch images, ghost images, but they're the reverse images of the bright colors on the previous slide. This is an example of retinal fatigue. Even brief exposure to strong colors leaves an after image, and considerable rest may be needed to let the eye recover. So here's another example of how eyes adapt. 
What about the blue in this picture? Is the blue on the left the same as the blue on the right? Ha! Huh. Well, yeah, it is. Other colors in our field of view can greatly affect our perception of color. Wall color, drapes, brightly colored accessories in the room. How about our desktop image on our computer screen? Light gray is best to combat retinal fatigue from strong colors or confusion from background effects. What you experienced was an example of how background colors can affect how we perceive color. Always be aware of colors in your field of view. Now, we also have poor color memory. We think we remember a color. We think we can tell if a color is very different or just a little different from another. But can we? Unless colors are put side by side, it's very difficult to tell how much difference there is in two colors. We have very poor color memory. So our eyes are also affected by this phenomenon. We think we can remember what we saw and use sliders in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw to match it. But that's often just not possible no matter how good our color vision may be. Now here's another factor. Can you see a number in this field of dots? Some of you will and some of you won't. Some degree of color vision deficiency is very common in males and certainly does occur in females as well. Perhaps the most common form we've heard about is red-green deficiency. However, this condition can manifest itself in various ways. Color vision deficiency affects large numbers of the population, and photographers are certainly not immune. But it doesn't have to affect our ability to deliver an excellent file to a client or lab so that the end product includes the colors that we can't even see. Now, other things that affect how we perceive a screen to print match include the color of light that we're using. D50 is the official CIE standard illuminant. That's about daylight. The light source under which a print is viewed will affect the color we see. Lighting standards are really required for accurate viewing. So if we're judging print output, we need to have some kind of standardized viewing conditions and understand the limitations that might be inherent in the lighting source that we use. Something else we can't escape is how age affects our color vision. As we age, our color perceptions change. The corneal lens yellows and becomes less flexible. That's why we end up with cataract surgery and that's why we can often see colors much more brightly, much more intensely after that kind of surgery. Now we see the challenge that we have with our wonderfully adaptable eyes. They're affected by all kinds of things around us. What we need is an instrument that doesn't change. It measures color exactly the same day after day after day. So let's look quickly at the, some of the solutions that are available to you for monitor calibration. x rite has two monitor and projector colorimeter solutions especially designed for photographers and include support for wide gamut displays and new technology monitors and projectors. It allows you to match multiple displays and standardize them so that your monitor, what you see on your monitor, is what your lab sees on their monitor when they pull up your file. Now, Color Monkey Display is for people who want an easy to use professional solution at a value price. Color Monkey Display is advanced display calibration made easy for color perfectionists. It really is simply amazing. The fast and intuitive wizard driven interface makes it easy for color perfectionists to get amazing color at the speed of light. Now I'm going to click out of my presentation in just a moment and give you a look at the Color Monkey Display software itself. 
But before I do, I want to show you a couple of photos of what's going to be happening here on my desktop. Before I go over the software, I want you to have a look at what the device is going to look like on my laptop right here in my uh, office. You won't be able to see this. You'll be seeing what is being projected on the screen. The Color Monkey display colorimeter will be placed very flatly against the computer screen to measure the luminance and color patches that will be displayed during the calibration and profiling process. A calibration system consists of hardware and software working in concert to produce the result. The hardware here is a colorimeter, a measuring device. It is consistent and calibrated to give you years of worry-free, reliable color management. As you can see, it's designed to hang right on the display while the measurement sequence is in progress. The software sends shades of white to black and lots of colors to the monitor, and the colorimeter measures what the display is producing. The software knows exactly what RGB value it's sending to the monitor at any given moment. The device measures what the monitor is producing, analyzes it, and creates a profile that allows the monitor to produce color as accurately as possible. What a display calibration solution does is create and install a profile, a text file, into the operating system of your computer. This process doesn't change your image file. It simply changes the way the monitor or projector displays the image so that you're seeing it as accurately as the device you're calibrating and profiling can reproduce it. Then you can make changes to the file that are accurate. Okay, let's have a look at the software. This is Color Monkey Display software. And you see that it's very clean. It only has two options here, one for your display and one for your projector. And what we're going to talk about today, what I'm going to show you, is how to profile your display. Now, I have two monitors here on my desktop. One is the color LCD on my laptop itself, and the other is an, a, a separate monitor. So if you have two monitors, you want to choose the one that you want to profile. And the one that I want to profile today that I'm showing you is my color LCD. You'll notice over here on the left that all the steps in the profiling process are listed so that you know exactly what to expect. And if you want to match another display, you just click right here and you will be able to match another display that you've previously uh, profiled with this system. I'll just click Next and you'll notice that we have two modes. An easy mode, which gives you absolutely no options. It sets up exact based on what you've chosen previously in the advanced mode or the default settings uh, when you uh, just open your Color Monkey uh, display software. Or you can go into the advanced mode and have some changes that you can make. And here you'll notice that we set our white point at D65. D65 is an industry standard used in photography. We do recommend that unless there is some uh, other good reason to change it, you leave it at D65. Now, Color Monkey Display gives you two important ways to set white luminance on your computer. First, the Color Monkey Display can uh, use its ambient light measurement capabilities to measure the light that you're going to use to judge your printed output. So if you have a place that's set aside to judge print output, that's what you would want to measure, whether it be a light box, a special area, whatever light you're going to use to judge your print would be what you set that luminance to. Now, if you're judging your prints based on a standard that you, you don't worry about, uh, it, you're going to just walk over to the window, you're going to get the cleanest light that you can to judge your prints. Uh, you want to just control uh, your luminance on your monitor, then we suggest that you literally lock down your luminance based on an industry standard. Now, we used to use, we used to recommend 120, and we found that people kept coming back to us at 120 and saying, you know, my prints are still a little too dark. What happens when your monitor is a little too bright, 
for the ambient light conditions that you're working in, then if it's a little too bright, you're going to darken that file. You're going to send that file to the lab. The file's going to be too dark. The print's going to come back a little too dark. So what we're finding is that folks generally are working in environments where about 100 candelas per meter square is appropriate for most situations. Now, if you have a really bright uh, working environment, you might want to change, you know, go up a little bit. If you have a really dim working area, you might want to go down a little bit. But the point is, if you start at 100, you can go in either direction. And when you get those prints back from your lab, if they're a little too dark, you want to bring your luminance down. If your prints are a little too light, you want to bring your luminance up. All right? But this is going to standardize your luminance. Now, Color Monkey Display also has two new advanced options. Now, these advanced options are possible only because of the redesign of the device itself. Ambient Light Smart Control allows you to sit the device on your desktop and monitor the lighting conditions all throughout the day. I'll just bring this little movie over here that's embedded in the software to let you have a look. Now what we recommend is to have a viewing booth or area to view your prints, use a display hood to keep uh, light off your monitor, but we know that you're often working on a desktop with light spilling on it, with no hood, with overhead lights, and often even with windows that are changing. In these poor lighting conditions, you can use ambient light smart control to be able to help you manage that light throughout the day. Now again, we want you ideally to control those lighting situations, but if you can't, this is an option to help you uh, get around the problems that you're having. The other thing we have is something that a lot of us deal with, and that is flare correct. Now, flare or glare on your monitor is very common, especially with these glossy screen monitors. Again, we would prefer a matte screen monitor with a hood. Most of us are not working in those environments. We've got some kind of glare or flare on the screen. And so what Flare Correct does is it allows you to make a final measurement about 12 inches, as you can see, off the face of the monitor at the end of the profiling process. And that takes into account some of this flare and glare that you have running around in your environment. All right. So now the first thing the software asked us to do is just take an ambient light measurement. And I'm going to do that it's sitting right here on my desk. And you can see that I'm in a very dim environment today. My shades on my windows are drawn, my lights are turned down, uh, and I'm reading a very low reading. I'm not going to use this to set my luminance, but I could use this if this was the viewing conditions that I was going to use to view my prints. Now, we're going to get ready to start measuring colors and uh, white to black gray ramps as they're displayed on the screen. And you'll see here that the software is telling us that the ambient diffuser is covering the lens. And the lens needs to be open and placed on the monitor, as we talked about earlier from those pictures. So I'm just going to pull up, swing that around, just like it shows you there in the uh, illustration. And I'm just going to place that device right on that marquee on my monitor. Now you'll notice that it's really uh, uh, urging you to make sure that it's very, very flat to the face of the monitor. And I'll go ahead and show you this little movie to illustrate what I just did. These are little movies are embedded in the software. So pull that diffuser up, swing it around. You can adjust the, the counterweight measurement by just pushing it and moving it up and down and then hang it right over your display, placing it very flatly right on that marquee. And that gets you set to go. All right. And all you do then is just press next. The profile that the computer has been using will be removed. And what will start happening is shades of white and gray and black will begin to display 
on your computer monitor. You notice right down at the bottom it says X-Rite ADC. Automatic Display Control is now optimizing the luminance of your display. Color Monkey Display is able to talk directly to most computer monitors to set the luminance, the white point, and the contrast automatically. Now, when the monitor is not able to be accessed by the software, you'll get an error message and it will tell you to do this manually so you can adjust your luminance manually. But what's happening in this process is the calibration process. We're calibrating the hardware so that it is producing the white point, the luminance, and the contrast as accurately as possible before we even begin the profiling process. Now I want to be clear with you that this whole process that I'm showing you here today for calibration and profile, I'm shortening it for this presentation so that we don't just sit here and watch these beautiful colors go by for, you know, the few minutes that it takes. When you're in your own environment, this often takes anywhere from five to seven minutes or so. You can get up, get yourself a cup of coffee, uh, check your email on your phone, talk to your spouse, check the news, whatever else you need to do. Uh, this is just going to sit here and go uh, by itself. Now you can see once the ADC is finished, and this was in real time, it clicks right over to producing the color patches. Now remember we talked about the software knows exactly what RGB value the color it's sending to the monitor is every single time it changes. Right? The device is measuring exactly what the monitor is producing. It's not being fooled by any colors that are in the background. It's not being fooled by the ambient light. It's not being affected by whether it's hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. It's just measuring those colors accurately every single time they're produced and feeding that information back to the software. Then the software says, all right, I sent this color, this RGB value, the, the device measured this color, which is a different RGB value. I'm going to write a correction file, a factor, correction factor, a profile that will allow those colors to be produced as accurately as is humanly possible on that particular device. So every device is going to be a little bit different. And again, devices are going to drift over time because any electronic piece of equipment is affected by the quality of the electric line voltage that's coming to it. So, for instance, if your lights dim slightly every time your refrigerator comes on or your air conditioner comes on, not uncommon for a lot of us, dim just slightly, maybe a lot. That's telling you that the line voltage is shifting ever so slightly. And those are the kinds of things that can make drift happen even faster. All right. Now, remember I told you I'm going to speed this process up. So it says here we got four minutes remaining. I'm just going to speed this up and go right to the end of the process. Okay, now we've shortened the process and now we're at the end. And what we see here is the screen for the flare correct reading. Now, remember, this is a revolutionary new way to be able to take into account glare or flare. We pull the device, as it shows here in the drawing, uh, just about uh, 12 inches off the face of the monitor. So we're holding the device out and pointing it toward the monitor and hitting measure. And you'll see at the bottom a progress bar here. Now this only takes just a few seconds. Uh, we're pointed toward a black screen so that the device is sensing this flare or glare. And once it's finished, it's going to give us the opportunity to name and save our profile. So it says here, measurement complete, flare was detected. And we're just going to hit next. You'll see that any time it's a place to hit next, that you've got a pulsing bar around here. We just hit next, and here we go to name our profile. And I like to put a date in here. So I'm going to put the date for today. 
and I know that this is my color LCD, a D65, uh, and I would know that this is my Color Monkey display if that's the only device that I'm using. Otherwise, I'd put probably CM at the middle and hit save. This progress bar shows us that it's building the profile. It's taking into account all those measurements that it made, and it's doing the final, final iteration uh, of the profile. So Color Monkey Display iterates the profile as it goes. It measures some of the colors, makes some changes, applies them, measures more colors, and you notice toward the end of the color sequencing that you get into some really pastel and beautiful colors that we've never really seen before uh, in color management uh, products like this. So. Uh, now we can set a reminder uh, at a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Uh, we're going to start with a four week reminder and just hit next. It applies the profile. It's As I said before, it applies it in the operating system of the computer. And it doesn't change the file that we're looking at at all. And so we can have a before and after and various uh, photos that we can judge down here. And you can even insert your own custom image. All right, and so then we just hit next at the end. Then here, if we wanted to enable our ambient light monitoring to sit on the desk and monitor uh, the light changing all day long, we certainly could do that here. Just hit finish and we're done. So what we just had a look at is Color Monkey Display, an advanced display calibration made easy for color perfectionists, digital photographers. A color monkey display is for people who want an easy to use professional solution at a value price. As we said, it's simply amazing. It's fast, intuitive, wizard driven, and makes it easy for you to get the amazing color that you want. X-Rite has two families of solutions for digital photographers. One is the Color Monkey family, and we just saw the demonstration of the wizard-driven, easy-to-use software that drives the Color Monkey display. The other is the i1 family of solutions for the ultimate in control. i1 Display Pro includes video presets for video editing, custom patch sets for larger patch sets that can include Pantone colors and color palettes extracted from photographs, a quality assurance test, a uniformity check, trending, contrast ratio limiting, and it measures five times faster. And that's important because when we get into the larger patch sets, then uh, we want to have a device that's going to measure significantly uh, faster. So i1 Display Pro, professional display calibration for the most demanding color perfectionists, all the bells and whistles, all the extra stuff built into the software. Both of these devices are identical in architecture, filters, lenses, and the color engine in the software, both software packages, that creates the profile is the same. Now, you can learn more about all X-Rite solutions and all kinds of videos, webinars, tutorials, you name it, product information, articles of all kinds, uh, the X-Rite Photo Blog 24-7, 365, and here are just some ways you can find us. xritephoto.com, blog.xritephoto.com, on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and YouTube.